If a TV anchor person travels 10,000 miles to get here, you can bet she's going to be on public exposure. Margaret Wash from TVN in War Warsaw, Poland, right here tonight. I'm Stan Emmert, and uh, Margaret, welcome very much to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's TVN 24 because it's 24 hour news station. TVN 24, yes. got it, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so we had two dignitaries in Seattle this week, the president of China and you. Oh yes, of course, I'm, I'm the <laughs> more important than him. <laughs> but uh, what, we would, uh, what we'd really like to talk about those because not very many people know very much about your country is, uh, is Poland itself. So if we could, here's Poland up, up on the map. It's in Europe. In Europe. And you're from Warsaw there. Yes. That, and that's a river? Yes, it's a Vistula River. Mm -hmm. Beautiful rivers. Like, let's, let's go to some demographics. It's okay. uh, for the, our public. It's about the same land mass as New Mexico. 38 million people, roughly California. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very dense. Uh, Warsaw, the largest city, 1.7 million people. Well, almost 2 million right Almost now, 2 million yes. now, mm -hmm. so it's grown even more. 90% uh, Roman Catholic. I want to get to the next graphic and we'll go back okay. to that. Average lifespan, 75. So not a whole lot different than the United States from average lifespan. Yes. Um, but the 90% Roman Catholic, um, I had thought that Poland was significantly Jewish, but I guess not, huh? Poland was significantly Jewish. No, yeah. uh, we, were, we were always uh, Catholic, 90%, but of course not everybody's practicing, not everybody's going to church every Sunday, but uh, we think of ourselves as Catholics. But even if we do not practice really. All around the world, uh, religion seems to be having a more um, well, it's certainly a, a more pronounced uh, involvement in government mm -hmm. um, and in public affairs. Is, is, does religion well, have a lot Poland, to do with that? Yes, in Poland, religion is very important, and, and politics too, in politics. Uh, especially it was important before uh, when we were in the communist uh, uh, bloc, uh, before eight, 1989 because uh, the church uh, played a very important role in abolishing communism. We had John Paul uh, II, uh, who really uh, supported uh, people fighting with uh, communists. So the church was really uh, a very important matter at that time, and, and, and the religion. And right now, too, because, um, because of John Paul II, of course, because uh, we, we, we right now treat him as a saint, even though he's not baptized yet. But he is, uh, right now it's the process of baptizing him. And uh, so all the politicians sometimes even use uh, uh, religion in their campaigns, which is... Uh, imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. But it's not really uh, what they should do, but they do that. Some people would say the same thing here. Mm. Uh, and let's go to where Poland is in Europe in relation to other, other countries. Right, right there it is. It's kind of uh, in the eastern side, but certainly far separate now from, from Russia. Okay, on the western side we have, we have Germany. On the southern side we have Czech Republic and Slovakia. And on the eastern side we have Ukraine, Belarus, and, uh, and Russia. And Lithuania, Latvia, and uh, Russia, Lithuania more. Mm. Are you free to travel in amongst all of those countries? Yes, yes, of course. We are. We are. Uh, f f two years ago, we became a member of the European Union, and uh, so we are traveling freely around Europe with no visas, no problem. We just have to have a passport or an ID. Hmm. Let's go to the next graphic, if we could, because that's going to show uh, in greater detail how close uh, that Poland is to. Uh, do you have a, a closer connection? Do you feel closer to? <laughs> people from Germany than people from the Ukraine or? Well, we feel very close to, to people from the Ukraine, especially uh, after their orange revolution that they had a year ago. Uh, people of Poland uh, supported them very much. And right now we are supporting uh, very much the uh, opposition in Belarus, uh, which is not a very big one, but still there is, there is some. And they had elections. Uh, last month and uh, we that was a very big issue in Poland mm. and there were demonstrator demonstrations uh, on the streets and we were demonstrating before uh, in front of the uh, Belarusian embassy uh, but of course uh, you know the the result of the elections is that Lukashenko is still president and then probably he's going to be for a long time well, and of course Germany on the other hand yes it's it's the closest western country uh, in, uh, from Poland and 
We had, uh, as far as the politics is concerned, is concerned we had uh, little, uh, for as to say, more difficult times uh, with the, the relationships with Germany and France when our uh, politicians, our president, decided to go to Iraq with the United States, and they didn't. So this was a time time of uh, being a little bit cold, cold relations, but right now we're, we're making it up. Were the Polish people in support of uh, going to Iraq militarily? At the beginning, yes. Right now about 65 percent of Poles are for withdrawing our troops from Iraq. Do you have many troops there? Well, we had more than 2,000. Now, now we have about 1,000 because mm -hmm. we reduced it. And our president said that we're going to stay there till the end of this year, and then we'll see. Yeah. Let's talk about Poland itself and what Americans think of Poland, because in, in talking with older Americans, I think they kind of think that Poland reminds them of this. And these are oh. old World War II photos. And it, it's actually really significantly changed, hasn't it? Yes, but it was 60 years ago, the, the, so. these photos, but it's, it's a very important, it was an important issue. In, in Poland, of course, we had, we had the big war that was just in our country. But right now, we're, we're a different country right now. We are a member of European Union. We, we are just normal people going to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see some of those normal yes, shots. Okay. Then. Let's, let's, uh... These are, yeah, this is our Łazienki uh, Park. This is one of the parks in, uh, in Warsaw that we go for walks on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the old town. It was rebuilt, of course, because it was all uh, destroyed during the Second World War. We had a resurrection in 1944, and the uh, Germans destroyed all the old town. There were really s severe attacks were there. Now this, um, it, yeah. there's kind of it's a well, we would call it a double-edged sword. I mean, it's a beautiful building. It's the Empire State Building, don't you think? So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, it was built during a darker time. Uh, yes, it was built around I don't know 60s, I think. Uh, I don't know the exact date. It's the Palace of Culture. It was built by the Russians as a present from Stalin to, uh, so it, it had to be uh, in the 50s. Uh, the present from Stalin to, to Varsovians. And, and right now we still have it, of course, because it's a big building. We had a movie that ended with destroying Palace of Culture, but that was only the movie. <laughs> and right now uh, there are theaters, uh, cinemas, uh, some bureaus. So you turn it into so, a shopping mall. That's well, great. Well, no, not really, but maybe not, not really, because there are many offices over there, too. Um, I want to take you back to a, a time here in the United States. Uh, people who are my age, we we all remember where we were when John F. Kennedy was shot, our president, mm -hmm. in 19, uh, well, 45 years ago. Um, other people, in fact, all of us uh, of almost any age now, remember where we were on 9/11. Um, is it true that when the Berlin Wall fell, that people in Eastern Europe, people in Poland, you remember where you were when you heard that first heard that news? No, I mean. Yes, of course. I remember that I was just uh, uh, finishing my studies, but no, no, not not as you remember that I was, I don't know, eating lunch or something like that. No, nothing like that. But of course, I remember that. I remember that time. But uh, what polls say that we were first because we had the elections before uh, for, for the new free uh, parliament, and we had roundtable talks before uh, in '88. So. Uh, in 89 at the beginning, so we were first and the Germans were second. So this is uh, something that you're very proud about. Yes. Um, that just, they just came after you, huh? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, well, something that I wanted to ask about, you, you have a very important position uh, being a TV anchor person and, and a host where people are very trustworthy of you. and. Um, I guess I'm, and what I'm asking about is the status of women in the workplace in society in Poland. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I never had any problem uh, uh, because I'm, I'm a woman. Uh, I'm a chief of the assignment desk. Uh, I, I play quite, quite an important role in, in my uh, news station. But uh, it's usually the problem of um, poor women in, in smaller cities that if 
there is a very uh, strong feminist movement in Poland, and what they say is that, and it's true, of course, that uh, Polish women tend to earn less on the same positions uh, than men. Well, I don't know if it's if it's true in my case because I don't know how my co how, how much money my colleagues earn. Uh, but this is, of course, a joke. But. Uh, Mm, that, 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 that's really the problem because if you if you if you are an employee and you want to employ a person and then you have two people that you have to choose and you have a man and a woman you probably would choose a man because especially if it's a young woman who will probably get pregnant who will probably go for a leave and now our politicians uh, tend to prolong the leave uh, maternal leave. So uh, this is a, quite a big issue right now in Poland because uh, of this uh, prolonging this mater maternal leave because it has the just like a coin the two sides because first of course it's good for women and, and, and the child but sometimes it's not for 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 employees uh, because they would think that this woman will go that she won't be there for for half a year or so mm. are abortions legal in Poland no it's not legal okay. does it does it happen Yes, it happens, of course, uh, it happens, uh, I think, uh, very often, really. It's the underground that is uh, doing this, and uh, it's also a political issue in, in Poland. I mean, it, it tends to be a, one of the subjects during the political campaign before the elections. Mm. What, uh, that's going to lead me just into a, another question, then. What? What are the political campaigns about? I mean, if, if I were to go and, and ask anyone about what's the main issue in mm -hmm. general, what well, would the main issue be? Well, in Poland, it's the taxes, of course, the economy, uh, the role of family, the, which is a very strong one. Role of family. Yeah, the, How is I that mean, a helping issue? family, especially in the taxes, hmm. you know, so that the family could. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say it at the end of the year that you have to uh, count everything and then you, you pay the taxes that you could have some. We all just did that know. here in the United States, yeah, I April know. 15th. Yes, I know. Or we filed an extension. But <laughs> <laughs> we do it at the end of April. And uh, also, what's very important in Poland is that uh, two years ago we became a member of the European Union. Mm -hmm. And right now we have to change regulations so that we could adapt to the European Union. And we have to uh, somehow uh, spend the money that comes from Europe, especially on roads. And road, roads is a very, very big problem in Poland. We don't have highways like you have in, in the States. We've got roads that are not like European roads, really. We're ashamed of our roads. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, oh, why uh, were they just not ever repaired? It's an unsolvable problem. <laughs> oh, it's an unsolvable problem. Okay. Well, that's kind of the way we think about some things around here. Um, we're going to take a real short break. Okay. So I want to remind everyone we're uh, talking with uh, Margaret Wash, who is an anchor person and a, and a host on TV station TVN24 in Warsaw, Poland. There's the website, and that's one of the shows that she is a host for right there. If you want more information about this uh, the station, you can go to tvn24.pl. Got to warn you, though, it's in, it's in another Polish. language, so <laughs> it'll be difficult for you. Um, but um, Margaret is here in the United States as part of the International Visitors Program and is brought to us from the World Affairs Council. Tell us about your shows. Oh, I've got two shows. Well, my main show is on Sunday. It's just like in, in the States, you've got Meet the Press, for example. Mm -hmm. So I meet with uh, journalists uh, from different uh, newspapers. So and you're like we, Tim Russert. Yes, uh, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we talk about what happened during the, the week. It's, it's a political uh, show, really, because we talk about politics, because uh, politics in Poland is a very complicated and, and difficult matter. It's easy here. If you got the most money, then you're okay. <laughs> we won't talk about that, though. It's uh, not like that in Poland. The uh, the kind of guests that come on your show are they are they newspaper columnists or are they the actual politicians themselves? No, no, no. The, uh, in this show, they're uh, of course news columnists. Uh, they're they're journalists. They people who work for who, who write in the newspapers never never politicians because it's called a press gallery oh yeah it's okay. for the gallery that we have in in our congress that for the for the press that they're watching so it's it's this is the name press gallery so it's only for for the uh, press and um, 
the other show that you have? And the other show is the political scanner. I don't know if you have this word. Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, no, that you scan. Uh, you, you make photographs by, by oh, this. Okay. Uh, okay. Political scanner. And it's also mostly with journalists, but here uh, sometimes uh, we invite, uh, I mean, I invite, uh, because I, I do it on Mondays and Tuesdays, and my friend is doing it on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And we invite sometimes politicians and the experts, too. Hmm. Do, do people criticize you when they, when they find out that you've asked a question that they don't like? I've got many, many letters and, and emails, of course, as always. And they criticize my guests, too. Yeah, yes, how do you it's, it? it's it's a normal. It's a, well, it's it's one of it's a part of my work to have uh, sometimes really very bad letters. <laughs> sometimes some bad letters. Huh? Yes. Well, you've been uh, the chief assignment editor for quite some time. Now. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to skip over uh, one of our graphics, and I want to go straight to something that happened in 2003. Yeah. Uh, and there, there's a headline out of a Canadian. Uh, uh, actually, CTV uh, Canada. Yeah. Uh, two Polish reporters were abducted in Europe mm -hmm. or in Iraq, rather. Yes. And you were the assignment editor at the time. Tell us what happened. Well, uh, our reporter Marcin Firle was in Iraq, and uh, because we sent reporters at that time to Iraq, now we're not doing that because it's 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 too dangerous. But it's it's not because of Marcin. It's because of, of that the situation now is dangerous. And uh, they were traveling from one city to, to the other, from Al Hila to, uh, I think they were going to Baghdad. And there were two cars. It was Marcin Firle and uh, his friend uh, from the Polish uh, public radio station, uh, Jacek Kaczmarek. And so they were uh, traveling together. And uh, on the back, there was another car uh, with our producer and our cameraman just following. And uh, there was something going on on the main street uh, to Baghdad. So they, unfortunately, they turned uh, to the smaller street or a road, maybe, uh, so that they could be go quicker. But that quick, of course, it uh, turned out that uh, they were uh, stopped by uh, Iraqi soldiers. And when the second car saw that, uh, they had instructions from us and uh, also from different uh, soldiers in Poland that you should not uh, go together, that uh, you have to run away if it's possible so that you can uh, report that su such a uh, uh, capture w was t w t took place. And so when, when the second car saw what was going on, uh, they turned uh, away, and the cameraman was making pictures from, from the back seat of, of the car. So we had pictures of, of the, the, the two reporters being uh, captured by soldiers. They had their hands up, they had to kneel uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the road, and the, this was the moment where the pictures ended. And what happened, they were, they were captured by the soldiers, uh, treated not, 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 not very badly, but then they were handed over to uh, the security forces. And that was uh, the end of being well uh, treated, and they were tightened up and put in some basement in Al Hila. And what was worse, uh, the American soldiers, American troops started bombarding Al Hila at that time. So they were under the American fire just being in the basement of a school somewhere. They didn't even know uh, wh what city they're in because they had their uh, eyes uh, covered. And that was for about uh, one day and a half. And when the American soldiers stopped bombing the city and uh, were uh, getting in, with the soldiers, the tanks, uh, etc., then the, uh, those forces, the Iraqi forces, didn't know what to do with them. They fortunately they didn't kill them. That was the beginning of, the, of war, really. So uh, they treated them differently. They didn't know how to how to how to uh, what to do. So they told them to leave, and they had to to just let them go. Uh, yes, they just let them go. They they had they to run come. away. They were just you know attacked by American soldiers, really, because uh, you know the American soldiers didn't know that there were two uh, Polish journalists over <laughs> there. So, but they safely got uh, to uh, to some uh, troops and uh, and they got saved. But we didn't we didn't hear from them for 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 one day and a half. 
from them and uh, we the producer fee, uh, had fed the uh, pictures to us so we saw how they were captured really the, we we had very uh, bad intuitions about what what happened afterwards after they had to kneel uh, on the road with their hands up you know and the soldiers were having guns so you know the imagination said that probably something very bad happened to them and uh, there was a very, very strange situation because uh, we invited the wife of Marcin to see the pictures before we broadcast them so that she could make the decision if she wants that, those pictures to be on the air. And I was sitting with her, just beside her, and she was looking at the pictures that was really terrifying for her. And she got a call. And so if she got a call, then I, I just uh, was, uh, did something with my work. But then I heard that she's talking very strangely. And then I turned to her, who are you talking to? <laughs> and she said, well, it's Marcin. Marcin is calling. So everybody in the newsroom you know, was very happy. Mm. But, but that is the same day that Marcin and Jacek were freed. Uh, our friend, a uh, Ukrainian uh, journalist who worked in Poland for Reuters and uh, who also went to Baghdad. He was killed by an American soldier. Oh. The ser it was just one hour after we heard that Marcin is free, we heard that Taras, uh, he, he, was, he was killed. So uh, we've got, we have history uh, with our journalists in Iraq too. We have uh, one, uh, two journalists from public television killed in Iraq by Iraqis. Mm, by Iraqis. Mm -hmm. and but this is not was not your first experience. You, Margaret, watched first experience in the Middle East when you were younger. You lived in Iran. Yes, in Iran, but uh, it wasn't. Well, I was with my parents. My father was a diplomat. He was an ambassador uh, in in Iran, and I went to school. I went to an American school in in Iran for three and a half years. That was elementary, so it was a long time ago. But I lived during the revolution, so I, I, I saw being Shah being abol abolished. Yes, you say that, and uh, Khomeini coming to to Iran. You did. <laughs> yes, and we left just before uh, the American embassy was captured. If you remember that, the terrorists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess you you left under fear. You you knew that you couldn't stay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want to get now to the question that all of our audience wants to know, and it's what do the <laughs> Polish people think of Americans? Well, Polish people like Americans. There was a survey made by your uh, American Institute, the Pew Institute, mm -hmm. and it turned out that uh, about 60% of Poles like Americans, but American people, not, not politicians, uh, etc. So American that's the, ne people. That's the next like, question. Yes. What do Polish people think of the uh, United States government? I don't think there was a survey made on that. <laughs> so I don't know, really. Well, that's a very diplomatic answer right there. Yeah, we have a problem, of course, that we have to uh, have a visa to, to come to, to the States. You know, this mm -hmm. is something that we cannot understand, really, because we are, uh, our politicians always say that we're one of the closest ally of the United States. Our soldiers are in Iraq. But still, our people coming to the United States, we have to get a visa. Hmm. Do you not have to get a visa to go to England or to go to... No, no, of course not. Are there any other countries that you know that you have to have a visa to well, go to? Well, of course, to? Canada and Mexico and uh, some of the uh, Far East uh, countries, some, but I don't remember which ones, really. Hmm. Let's talk about, about how you feel or how the Polish people feel, though, in, in terms of all of the criticism that the United States is getting today over the Iraq war. And, mm -hmm. you know, I hate to bring it up, but it is something that whenever we talk with anybody from outside our borders, it always comes up. Um, you said that your president has said that you're going to keep your troops there until the end of the year, and then we'll see. Mm -hmm. Do the Polish people want the Poles out of Iraq? Well, 65% uh, of uh, Poles uh, want uh, our soldiers to be out of Iraq right now, and many, many politicians to have. Uh, this is of all you, you asked about the political matters uh, in the campaign, so this is one of the matter, mm. of course. Why? Why did the Poles go to Iraq? I mean, why did they commit troops to Iraq? Well, because uh, we wanted to be part of the anti-terrorist. Uh, uh, 
how do you say that, anti-terrorist uh, group, block? Uh, the War on okay. Terror is what yeah. it uh -huh. okay. seems to be called. There are more people, though, here in the United States that seem to believe that the, the War on Terror is not a War on Terror, it's instead is a war to free the Iraqi oil for our Yes, use. that's what, of course, that some people, oh, we believe that too, but uh, the, the dominant uh, idea was that uh, we believe that Iraq has the massive uh, the weapons of mass destruction too of course we know now now that they didn't but uh, at that time we didn't know that hmm. yeah well we didn't know that that yeah, as well <laughs> um, if there was uh, any advice that you would give to someone who from the United States who wanted to travel in Poland what would you tell them oh that, that you have to go to Poland and see how, how it looks like today. It's a very open country. People are very nice. And just come to our country. You don't have to have a visa to come to our country. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've traveled across the United States as part of the uh, the trip that you're on right now. What would you tell when you go back to Poland about them, about traveling in the United States? Well, I have to digest it, you know, because I, I'm traveling around different cities and uh, I spend about three days in, in one, one city and then I'm going to the other one. But it's it's very interesting uh, experience for me. Uh, I uh, watch different television stations too, mm -hmm. so that I could compare how your television stations work and and mine. Besides yeah, this you know. television station, what's your favorite one that you've seen here? What I've seen, I, I love the studio of MSNBC. It was uh, really very impressive and very modern. And. Uh, I, I also talked to them about how the work is organized, which is very, very interesting for me, too. Mm. We're almost out of time. And if I were in, in Poland right now and your show was about to end, mm -hmm. how would you end your show? You want me to end your sh my show, your show, yes? In Polish, yes? How you would do it in Poland. Okay, oh, I will do it in Polish, of course. Bardzo Państwu dziękuję. To był program Stana. Dobranoc. With that... That says it all. Next week, by the way, Dr. Jim Smith, the medical director of Schicksteidl Hospital, talking about overcoming addiction, is going to be with us. That's uh, April the 27th, 2006. We have uh, great appreciation to the World Affairs Council and to Margaret Wascht from uh, TVN24 in Warsaw, Poland. If you ever get a chance to get over there, be sure to, uh, to watch her right there on her at least two shows, maybe three by then. We'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week. Take care. <laughs>